वाइस एडमिरल श्रीकोन एवीएसएम कमांडेंट एनडीसी एन माय डियर ऑफिसर्स वर ऑल अटेंडिंग दिस कोर्स आई एम हैप्पी टू बी विथ यू ऑल टुडे टू शेयर विथ यू सम ऑफ माय थॉट्स on india's perspective of a building a secure and peaceful world our purpose is to secure and to have peace in the world that is the primary objective of our national policy as well as foreign policy and defense policy also the history of mankind seems to be a ceaseless struggle between forces of war and peace between evil and goodness between violence and non violence between tolerance and hatred between understanding and misunderstanding between isolation and inclusion and between conflict and coexistence this is the situation today it is a continuous struggle and the state has a major role in it along with other bodies like the united nations the state had a pivotal role in ensuring security of all in the country and the territorial integrity of a country article 21 the heart of indian constitution and the democratic principle that uh, underpin it guarantees everyone right to life and liberty in fact the security of its citizens and national security is the prime responsibility of the state it is worth recalling Kauti Das Arda Shastra, written around the first century, AD outlines three important duties of the ruler. The first is raksha, protection of the state from external aggression. The second is palana, administration, prasasan, maintenance of law and order. The third one is yoga kshema. the ensuring safety and welfare of the people yoga in that sense is the welfare underlining the statement of these three mandates of the state is the recognition of the imperfect world we live in and the constant threat of violence and aggression see the vision and the knowledge and wisdom of that great man kauti dev what he has said those days there is a an ambiguous mandate to the state to maintain peace establish rule of law defend the borders and ensure that all citizens enjoy secure and fulfilling lives there is also a overtone that highlights the connection between the peace and progress welfare and development of the people and reduction in inequalities and disconnect can potentially lead to more harmonious peaceful and less in secure society progress if you want progress prerequisite is peace you cannot achieve progress without peace so what should we be addressing are the potential triggers that make our society insecure place the security strategy in simplistic terms focuses on identifying internal external and hybrid threats and suggests preventive prescriptive and operative ways to exercise comprehensive national power cnp to mitigate these effects the national security strategy aims at creating conditions to effectively pursue its development agenda while keeping the costs of security optimal and affordable the concept of national security has multiple dimensions it has to take into consideration various events and situations as they constantly emerge within and outside the nation our strategic security direction should encompass the following components one maintaining a deterrent capability to safeguard national interest two ensuring security of national territory maritime region including our trade routes air space and cyber space three maintaining a secure international environment to guard against threats to our unity and development fourth strengthening and expanding constructive engagement 
with the nations to promote regional and global peace and also international stability. My dear friends, as you are all aware, India's security strategy broadly reflects the core values which we have been defending from time immemorial. We have believed in that the world is one large family and exemplified by the oft, oft quoted statement Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. We always say Sarve Jana Sukhino Bhavantu. Vasudaika Kutumbakam. The entire universe is one family. In fact, our philosophy of India is, the gist of Indian philosophy, if I have to say in one word, is share and care is the core of Indian philosophy. We are a nation that has desired peace, not only on earth for human beings, but for the entire universe. Let me recall what the Vedic sages have said in Yajur Veda. May peace radiate in the whole sky as well as in the vast ethereal space everywhere. May peace reign all over this earth in water and in all herbs, trees and creepers. May peace flow over the whole universe. May peace be in the Supreme Being. Let there be peace, peace and peace to all of us, to all beings in this universe. This is what uh, Yajur Veda says. This has been the prayer that India has been, has given it to itself and the world. Peaceful coexistence has been an article of faith with us. My dear uh, friends, uh, every time Dick and Harry came and attacked us, but India, with all its power, knowledge, <coughs> never attacked any country. Go through the history. Because we believe in Vasudai Kutubakam, peaceful coexistence. The others came, ruled us, ruined us, looted us, and cheated some of our minds also. I'm sorry to use such strong words, but that's a reality. While uh, going away, the mindset they left here. So we have to come out of the colonial mindset at the earliest. Hatred and conflict have been constantly abhorred. Why I am saying this is, once upon a time, India was known as Vishwa Guru. Students from the world used to come to Naranda, Takshasala, Pushpagir and other places for learning. Even Pahiyan, Huan Song, the Chinese historians, they came and wrote about all this. And our GDP before the invasions and before the independence and all was much higher. Now we are struggling somewhere 7, 8 in between and all. We had the GDP of the world, 17% of the world GDP used to be from India, according to the statistics that are available. But still, we never, never attacked anybody because our philosophy is share and care. We should be proud of our country's timeless vision and uh, encapsulated a world view that is quite relevant even to this day. Let me share with you a Upanishadic verse. May God protect us both together. May God nourish us both together. May we work together collaboratively with great energy. May our study be ennobling. May we not hate each other for any reason. Let there be peace within my body. Let there be peace within my mind. Let there be peace in the environment around me. Dear friends, we are living in a world that is torn by violent thoughts, violent emotions and violent actions. To ensure security, we need to have a multi-pronged approach. The battle has to be fought on multiple fronts. Extremism, terrorism, communalism, violence against women and numerous other forms of violent behavior need a concerted approach. The preamble of the constitution of UNESCO declares that, I quote, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defense of peace must be constructed." Unquote. The defense of peace must be constructed in a number of places, starting with schools, colleges, universities, workplaces, and places of worship, homes, and in the fields. Education for peace and learning to live together is the need of the hour. Education with values of empathy, Compassion, tolerance and goodness embedded in the curriculum can prevent conflict and irrational violence. Community education, interfaith understanding 
and evolution of societal norms that encourage harmony and zero tolerance towards violence of all kinds can provide the foundation for a secure society. The sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita has the following lines. Mana eva manushyanam karanam bhanda moksha ho. It is our mind that either binds us or liberates us. We need more broad minds that are open and receptive, willing to accept and act on good advice, share positive thoughts and ideas that can transform the world for the better. Negative, narrow tunnel vision can only lead us all to a strife-torn world we would not like to enter. This is the medium and long-term view and action needed to prevent extreme violence. In short term, however, we need to be firm in our resolve to not allow any violence to spiral beyond control and take decisive, swift and stern action. We in India have been facing problems of insurgency, left-wing extremism, and attempts by certain vociferous forces to weaken the unity and integrity of the country. There is no place for violence in a democracy. India is a mature parliamentary democracy, and the ballot has proved to be far more powerful than bullet. Some of the forces, they advocate bullet, and some people, so-called the intelligentsia, a perverted mind, they also extend support. After this many years of civilization and growth of democracy and strengthening a parliamentary democracy, how can you believe in that outdated theory that power comes from the barrel of the gun? You know what happens. They kill somebody and then they get killed. This is what is happening. I have mentioned that the threat to internal security and senseless violence, which wears different garbs in different contexts, be it language or religion or community or ideology. There is also an external threat we have to recognize and counter in time and effectively. We live in a globalized world and what happens in one part of the world has an impact on many countries and regions. India, my friends, we used to have, we have this uh, terror, threat of terror and we have been victims. The international community, first for mostly Western countries, they were never bothered earlier. Now they are also realizing after 9-11. Uh, then what happened in Russia, what happened in France, what happened in Europe, what is happening in different parts of the globe. Now everybody has realized the threat of terror. And moreover, we in India, we are a peaceful nation. We believe in peaceful coexistence. But one of our neighbor, for reasons, for their own reasons, is aiding, abetting, funding, training terror. And then goes out and says, we want to have talks and all. Talks and terror cannot go together. That's very clear. That's why we are telling the international community, India is willing to resolve any issue, every issue, through peaceful dialogue. And we want to have friendly relations with all. The Prime Minister, Sri Adil Bihari Vajpayee, then Prime Minister, he said that you can uh, change your friends, but uh, you cannot uh, change your borders. So we, we are aware of this. That's why the Prime Minister, the present Prime Minister, will taking this swearing in ceremony. He invited all the Sark countries. They came. And even when there was a family function also, he went to Lahore without notice and met the family members of the Indian Prime Minister. But you know what is happening? Because they have their own political or uh, military or other compulsions and they are misguided to create terror because they want to cripple us economically. That is the reality and it has to be made clear to all. Whenever I am going out and interacting with the international community and leaders of the other countries, and I meet them here also, I am making it very clear. They are all appreciative. And today, terrorism is the biggest threat to humanity and all nations need to come together to eliminate this global menace. It is time for the United Nations and the global community to act with greater force and determination in tackling the problem. The international community must come together to stop aiding and abetting and funding train of terror. They must know the sources of uh, funding for these people and then act against them. But unfortunately, the, this discussion is going on, going on, going on. We have to conclude at the earliest, the United Nations, and then must go for some concerted action. Otherwise, you are seeing now new organizations, new theories are coming, 
and they are becoming a threat to the global peace. All countries have adopted an ambitious and transformative agenda for achieving 17 sustainable development goals by 2030. This agenda has the following important resolve right at the beginning. Quote, we are determined to foster peaceful, just and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. There can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. Unquote. One of the important findings of the World Peace Index 2018 published by the Institute of Economics and Peace is that global peacefulness has deteriorated by 2.38 percent since 2008. Another important finding of this report is about the impact of conflict on the macroeconomic performance. In the last 70 years, per capita growth has been three times higher in highly peaceful countries when compared to countries with low levels of peace. The way forward could be focused on inclusive development and reduce inequalities. Creating just and inclusive societies could lead to more peaceful world and this is what India is attempting through Sabka Saat Sabka Vikas approach. The Janadhana opening bank accounts or the mudra or the startup and stand up, make in India, skill India, digital India, green India, all these programs are aimed at inclusive growth. You cannot have a situation where in spite of our achieving so much growth after 71 years of independence, still we have 20-21% of the people living below poverty line. 22% of the people are illiterates, cannot ride and treat and ride. In certain places there is still gender discrimination. And then some sort of a discrimination on the basis of other things. They should be done away with at the earliest. And I must also tell you, our society, our dharma, our philosophy, never endorse these things about woman discrimination. Some people talk uh, casually without knowing the truth. They say, sir, this has been part of our society, sir. Women, they have been given different responsibility assignments. Maitreyi and Gargei, they used to come and open those days and argue with men. That is the history, that is the philosophy. And even the great rivers of the country, Ganga, Kaveri, Mahanadi, Tapati, Mahendra, Tanaya, Narmada, Yamuna, all rivers are named after women. And even the country we call it as motherland, not father's land, Bharata Mata. I am trying to give simple examples so that you can understand what has been the thinking and philosophy of our country. And even Devi, Devatas also we have all this. So that was never the case. Only thing is, uh, in between all these things, separations have come, we must take care of them. And also Vedas or Upanishads or your Puranas never sanctify the so-called untouchability. Nowhere there is any sanction. So such things should be done away with for that societal mobilization, political mobilization and also change of mindset is required through education. This is what is being done and attempts are being made in that direction. And also the country must become a healthy country. If you want to become a wealthy country, first you have to become a healthy country. Health brings wealth, but there is no guarantee that wealth gets health. So that being the case, this Vachya Bharat program, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao, or the inclusive growth, all these things are being attempted to. The, if you are united and if you are stable, if you are firm, and if you have inclusive growth, and if every section of the society are happy, then you will be able to safeguard the safety and security and unity of India in a better manner. This applies to all countries, including to our country. We need to develop the competence to understand the magnitude and the nature of each of these threats and prepare adequately to deal with each one of them. I am happy to know that the National Defence College brings together selected senior officers from various organs of the government and friendly foreign countries for giving them a structured exposure to various issues relating to national security of modern state in general and India in particular. I am told the college seeks to prepare these officers for higher responsibilities in the management of national security and other related areas of public policy. The 47-week course focuses on socio-political study of India, study on economic security, international security environment, 
global issues, science and technology, including environmental ones, India's strategic neighborhood, and finally strategies and structures for national security. The nature fury we have been facing, for that matter, entire world community, because we have neglected nature. Time has come, we have come, we have to go back to the policy of love and live with the nature. Love and live with the nature. Nature, culture, together for a better future. That should be our approach. A country which forgets its culture, its traditions, can never progress. You need to first create awareness among the children about the greatness of our culture. My dear friends, India is on the move. I have been to some of the foreign countries earlier as a minister, as a party functionary, now as vice president also. Now I could see a change of perception, understanding and appreciation about India. Everybody wants to do some business with India. They are all impressed by the growth story. They are all impressed about the progress being made in the country in various sectors. So they are all now wanting to do business with us. Even the International Yoga Day, which is sponsored by 172 countries, and I went to Peru, Panama. I was surprised at the number of places while driving, I could find uh, the yoga centers. The Romanian president was telling me with all happiness, sir, we had a yoga uh, class on uh, 21st June, what he was telling. So this is the new enthusiasm about our arts, about our culture, about our heritage. This is all attracting international attention. They are all also appreciative of our India stand. That's why you might be seeing one after another, whether it is International Court of Justice for yesterday's Human Rights Council, everywhere India is being backed with maximum number of countries. Yeah. The reason is they all appreciate our stand on various issues. There is some debate going on in the country. I would, I would like to focus on that also to you. Some people try to raise, uh, their, sir, freedom is under threat and all. India, freedom is secured. Some people say secularism is under threat. Secularism is there in the constitution which came subsequently. But secularism is in the DNA of Indian people. There is a difference between religion and culture. Religion is a way of worship. Constitution guarantees and our society also guarantees. In fact, we invited all religions from different parts. The Rajas and Maharajas, they all gave places also at that time. And the culture is way of life. What we stress and we talk of Bharatiya, Hindutva, Indianness is the culture. Culture is the way of living, a Jivana Paddhati. And religion is a way of worship. You can worship whoever you want. There is no problem. Whatever is happening here and there are all inspired by some local conditions and by some narrow-minded approach of few people. They should be isolated. They should be curbed and dealt with mercilessly rather than being glorifying them. But unfortunately, because of variety of reasons of ideological differences, political differences, some of these things are blown out of proportions and to bring a bad name uh, to the country. We know what is happening across the globe. And then, as I told you, that's why India is a record of tolerance comparatively better. Then there is a discussion about tolerance also. One has to be definitely tolerant. First, you must be tolerant towards the mandate of the people. That is the essence of democracy. That has to be understood by all. Secondly, with regard to the discussion about uh, freedom, freedom is definitely there for all. And all, some people talk about uh, dissent. Yes, dissent is agreeable, but disintegration is not acceptable at all. This has to be understood by one and all. You cannot propagate disintegration of the nation. And that's not allowed, even as per the constitution, as per the civilization. So that is the difference. Otherwise, people who have got the right, you are seeing how India people, issues are being debated, how you can criticize the Prime Minister personally, collectively or institutionally, and then all these things and all. And we have the best parliamentary system in the world. 
you have parliament, you have assemblies, you have great local bodies, three tier governance and directions are held regularly. So that way, that system has been functioning. Politically, of course, reforms. The Prime Minister gave a one, three line advice. He said the reform, perform and transform. Transform the nation. Transformation. And even the erstwhile the planning commission is now replaced by Niti Ayoga. Niti. Many people have not gone into the total this thing. Niti means NITA. National Institute for Transformation of India. That is the purpose. Transforming it in all sphere of activity. This is what is happening. Um, uh, friends, uh, I am very happy to come here today to this prestigious institution and also very happy to meet the officers, senior officers who are all going through these courses. And I wish you all the best and uh, for the endeavors as you embark on the challenging task of creating a secure and sustainable planet, I call it a planet, our combined effort is to secure a sustainable, peaceful planet for all of us. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Uh, can we start the Q&A now, sir? Oh, Question yeah. answers. Thanks. Uh, sir, over here, sir, at the back, sir. I am Brigadier Pankaj Malhotra, sir, from the Indian Army. Please. Uh, first and foremost, sir, I would like to thank the Honorable Vice President of India uh, on behalf of the entire 58th National Defence College course for having uh, taken out the time and giving us a, a, a very a wonderful expose on the strategic culture, the core values of India and what binds us together. And through uh, millennia, we've been together. Uh, my question, uh, we have very wonderful schemes. Uh, we've launched them, but on the face of it, uh, when we go on the ground, the implementation seems to be uh, not what it should have been, sir. And the basic reasons that uh, people give out is that it's a large country and very large population. However, I think the reasons uh, at your level from where you look at the country uh, would be more perceptible. Sir. What in your opinion are the reasons that our implementation is lacking? Sir? To understand, of course, the general answer is uh, India is a huge country. This country is uh, governed by a three-tier system. You have a central government laying out certain policies and programs and allocate some funds. You have state governments, which has been empowered by the constitution to execute the, even the central schemes. And then they have their own mandate and they have their own priorities. And then you have local bodies, municipalities, panchayat raj institutions, etc. Everybody is independent. They have been given certain responsibilities. And all these three types of institutions are ruled by different political parties. So there is a need to have a sort of a Team India approach. The Prime Minister has been stressing upon that. And then, you, who will implement? It's not like uh, I was minister for some time about the smart cities. People used to ask me, media people, sir, smart city, you launched some three months back, or six months back. Where is the smart city? These are smart cities are not like Allahuddin, Adbud Deep. You just say like this smart city, then automatically smart city comes and all. Involvement of the people for smart city, I told them for a smart city you need a smart reader. Not a reader in height, weight, coat, boots, out, hat. Reader with a vision, with clarity, with understanding, with capacity to execute. At the municipal level, Delhi will not do anything. Delhi will only sanction money, give guidelines and clarify positions if any and also arrange for public-private partnership, partners. Other things has to be done by the state government. Then again, even if the state government also can monitor, can guide, at the end of the day, it is a local institution. That's why we have come out with a special purpose vehicle, CEO for the smart cities and all. Just I'm giving an example. You see, it, it, it all depends on the execution one. And secondly, what happened, this government I uh, have taken up a number of schemes as the Prime Minister is very keen uh, 
you he want to change the system entire system changing the entire system is not that much simple there will be problems there will be resistance there will be vested interest and all you have, i remember i can be really frank with you when the prime minister said that uh, let us open bank accounts as one of the senior ministers i said so okay we will complete it within our period pm said uh, period i said yeah. thing which could not be done in 58 years we will definitely do it in 5 years he said no it should be done in 15 16 months right everybody kept quiet prime minister is prime minister but uh, i'm happy to share with you 36 crore 20 lakh bank accounts have been opened by the same people same bank staff no ot ot means over time managers everybody has done their duty so the result is there because of monitoring then because of leadership and also guidance provided and second reason people skip there are skeptical people there are number of people in our country they say matlab kya hai sir bank paisa nahi hai to janathana mein bank account kholne mein matlab kya hai paisa hai nahi okay but they all realized the importance of bank account on 10th november 2016 evening after hearing the prime minister's announcement and then started looking to the drivers and cooks and others why do you have bank account aapke paas hai bank account hai na मैं कुछ पैसा उसमें पार्क कर सकता हूँ क्या दे रियलाइज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ बैंक अकाउंट एंड देन नेक्स्ट अगेन सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट इज इन डेमोक्रेसी आर्ग्यूमेंट हैज टू बी देर क्रिटिसिजम हैज टू बी देर दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी यू हैव टू फाइंड फॉल्ट एंड देन कम आउट दिस वुड हैव बिन बेटर सो देन नेक्स्ट वन इज सर अभी वो क्या है मतलब क्या है पूरा पैसा बैंक में पहुंच गया आई हैव सम एक्सपीरियंस इन पब्लिक लाइफ फोर्टी ईयर्स आई एव नॉट एवं अंडरस्टैंड दिस लॉजिक अब फिर से पूरा बैंक पैसा बैंक में पहुंच गया पूरा पैसा बैंक में पहुंचना था ना वही पर्पस था द पर्पस इज टू ब्रिंग द एंटायर मनी इन टू द सिस्टम पैसा बैंक में पहुंच गया पैसा पता के साथ पहुंच गया पिता के साथ पहुंच गया पति के साथ पहुंच गया मनी हैज रीच विद एड्रेस नाउ इट इज द ड्यूटी ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एंड रिजर्व बैंक पीपल टू वेरीफाई एंड फाइंड आउट हाउ मच इज द एक्चुअल एंड हाउ मच इज नॉट द एक्चुअल दिस इज so that work is on but the money has come back to the system there is a fear now at least to keep huge amounts of uh, money but the fear will not go overnight only one with one stroke and all but the corruption at the top level has been reduced everybody is saying about it so niche then the transformation with regard to taxation the taxation reform gst is really one of the most revolutionary transformation process bringing everybody to tax net in sheer there is some pain i answer i told them temporary pain for long term gain there will be temporary pain i remember when uh, doctors uh, these people health people came to give, put vaccination to all of us tikka what do we call it? i don't know what you call it ever tikka those days so i we all some of us ran away because of fear tikka means we never experienced injection those days so then i went to my cattle shed and then hiding somewhere that fellow seems to be more enthusiastic he came and then identified us then climbed up and then put tikka on my back right <laughs> that similar is like under today that fear so this there will be some the initial problem that's why i use the word temporary pain for long term gain one man told so oh, it's very severe and i said babu if you have cancer then what is the remedy you must go for chemotherapy chemo then he said immediately he is also smart he said sir chemotherapy means there will be hair fall i said choice is yours you want to have hair fall or your fall you decide either way so the, in order to improve the system you need to go for some drastic actions but result is 52 days you have to stand in queue your own hard earned money sometimes sometimes atms did not this thing all these things are so what i am saying now see the result A large number of people have come to the net tax net tax rates have come down initially 28 has come down to 18 18 has come down to 12 12 is coming down to 5 about the slabs i am telling and it will come down further even the income tax there is an increase of uh, our latest figure is some 50 lakh people have joined uh, the income tax net and then natural income tax also will come down so any transformation it will take time once and that's why your question is very right that's why the prime minister also is eager to see that the further transformation takes place late rajiv gandhi former prime minister with all sincerity he also said one day if i send 100 rupees from delhi by the time it reaches tiruvananthapuram or anantapuram whatever it is only 15 rupees is reaching 85 rupees is siphoned off 
leaked in between the pipes. So this Prime Minister also has discussed it umpteen number of times within the cabinet, outside and all. Now they are talking of, they have introduced DBT, direct benefit transfer. They have now introduced JAM, Janathana, Aadhaar, Mobile. Then there is a debate whether Aadhaar is in the interest of the people, the privacy ko kya hoga, wagera, wagera. Chalte rahe hai. This is all because we are a democracy country. At the end of it, idea is to see that everybody gets their due, the scholarship, the pension, the compensation, the insurance, so many things like that. All these things directly are going to be put into the accounts of the people. The Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh was telling me, because of this, connecting it uh, with Aadhaar and all, the, in, uh, in the PDS alone, public distribution system, 6,000 crores is the saving in the last four years. Because people are drawing ration in, through some card or other without the beneficiary being there. Yesterday I was in uh, Rakhno, the in Allahabad. The Chief Minister was telling me they made a beginning in one division itself, 1200 crores saving in the public distribution system. So if you, you have to come out with new methods. Those people also will be coming out with other new methods. <laughs> the, there was a discussion about urea. It is an interesting thing for you, some of you to know. Urea shortage has been there for years together. I remember when I was MLA in 1978. I used to protest in assembly, used to walk out on a urea shortage. There was firing in Gadak in Karnataka, the shortage of urea. Our Prime Minister one day said, Bhai, what is this shortage? Why? Is there a production shortage? The chemical fertilizer minister said, no, sir. Then, delivery. The reason is, the, chem the urea is heavily subsidized by the government of India. And that urea is used for two purposes. One for the farmers, other is for chemical factories. So the Subsidy is not given directly to the farmer. There is no system so far. Now it's being evolved. It is given to factory and their production. 1,000 bags you produce, this much you can claim subsidy. And they are diverting it to chemical side also. So the Prime Minister one day said, uh, ideas, new ideas. Some people gave ideas and after one round and second time, he came with the idea and he said, let us have neem coating for the urea. Neem coating. We couldn't understand even, I could not understand what is neem coating. That urea is white and then you put neem, you say, kya hoga? By neem coating, urea has become unfit for chemical consumption. The result is last year, last before year, this year, there is no shortage of urea. No state have complained. No question of any walkout or any talk out also. So you, their government is trying to find out and even the uh, biometrics, to make people to come to office. Small, small things, but there is a lot of improvement in the work culture, comparatively. Swachha Bharat, there is a lot of improvement. Four crore toilets have been constructed in such a short period and all. The progress is on, but I do agree with you that it needs to be further expedited. Like that in every sector, in every, even Beti Bachao, Beti Padao, in a state like Haryana, the men and women population ratio, there is a lot of improvement. And we were discussing yesterday myself and Governor of Uttar Pradesh. I've been going around to various universities. Because you know that I was in, I was in politics 24 into 7. I used to go meet people, greet people, talk with people, walk with people. That has been my, this thing. But now as Vice President, there is a protocol. You can't uh, talk what you like. You have to go. So I have decided to cover five areas. One, university students. Second, research and science laboratories. Third, farmers groups. Fourth, cultural organization. Fifth, good NGOs. I am trying to reach out to them across the country. So in the university is what we could found to our happiness is when Vajpayee started Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, enrollment of the girl child started increasing. After this Beti Bachao, Beti Padao and overall awareness in the society and all, now in the universities, yesterday I was in Allahabad, Tribur IT. Uh, Earlier, I was there in Kanpur, Chandrasekhar Ajad, the Agriculture University. Then I was in Chennai, Pondicherry, even Puducherry in this uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, what we call Jipmar. So, 51% of the graduating students are girls. That's the change that's coming. In certain, and gold medals, now what they do, Vice President uh, is not supposed to stand for giving uh, medals to 600 graduates or 500 graduates. What they do is they make the governor to uh, the governor to give the remaining uh, medals 
the vice president will give for one gold medalist so while giving gold medals to gold medals also awarding gold medals i have noticed more than 65% of these gold medal awardees are girls women that's the change that is happening but the change is happening in each and every front uh, as i was telling but that will take uh, some more time i can tell you you go through the world economic forum report you go through world bank report you go through adb report you go through moody's ratings not modi ratings moody's ratings all are indicating india's growth and the latest imf one week back the report came the report says if you maintain this steady growth india is likely to become third largest economy in the world by 2030 40 this is this is there so definitely changes are happening but as you yourself said that one vast population second mindset also mindset is again another important you have to change the mindset for example this atrocity against women government is very serious but you can't expect the prime minister to go and catch every person and i i also wonder sometimes people say why prime minister is not catch every day prime minister if talks then what for the chief minister is there what will happen to the constitution the power law and order is given to the state the when this bill came to discussion in parliament i said nirbhaya and we also have a weakness anything happening we want an act in the name of that something happened in hyderabad university some act then something happened so okay 2012 i remember i was member of parliament so i was hearing the speeches and all everybody was saying nirbhaya act you know manika by bringing bill alone issue is not going to be resolved i said bill is okay what is required is not only bill political will administrative skill then go for the kill of the social evil mindset <laughs> mindset has to change and mindset is changing slowly or year you you come to know that there is going to be a girl child then immediate abortion now it has come down considerably considerably now there is a social stigma if you are doing it then people will this thing and say similarly you need to bring a change of mindset my granddaughter was telling me in the sanskrit school sanskrit school earlier she was there when they move around and so on one of the girls start eating chocolate and then drop that uh, wrapper the other girl suddenly caught hold of that and said hey swachh bharat modi that awareness even among the children also started so this will take some more time i am not trying to justify government because as a constitutional responsibility my responsibility to say about the system how it's functioning and there are drawbacks are being noted and they have to be rectified by the government sir please good morning sir my name is through captain mark lasa um hello you been Uh, sorry, from the Royal Australian Air Force. Although you've been thanked by one of my Indian colleagues today, I just want to say on behalf of the 25 foreign officers that uh, make up NDC 58, um, it's a real honour for you to come and talk to us today. Uh, so thank you from those uh, those nations as well. If I heard your your talk correctly, I picked up a line there that says talks and terror cannot go on together. Now, if this is the case, with no talk, then terror is likely to continue and if there is terrorism activities then there's no talk so what then is the political solution uh, solution for the enduring situation that is ongoing in Jammu and Kashmir please thank you this from australia i can tell you jammu and kashmir uh, is an integral part of india there is no question of conceding even an inch of the land of our nation to anybody to any cost one secondly there are related issues and some talks have been going on for years together for information on kashmir and other issues talks have been going on for years together the earlier prime minister late atal bihari vajpayee has taken a bus yatra trip to lahore lahore bus he went by bus then we started a samjhota express also then after that he had invited the pakistani president general mushraf to agra then also had discussions then we had a kargil war then again this this has become a continuous fashion what the process so what i am trying to say is the international community must stop the source of funding if all the entire world at least larger section of the world speaks with one voice 
naturally the people who are the offenders they will they have to hear that sort of a pressure has to be created and secondly public opinion also if you are a civilized nation definitely the local public opinion also will say by they are ready to talk let us give up arms keep the arms aside then discuss you we will be talking to them and then you kill our my jawans you mutilate them how can uh, anybody any nation can accept this so the solution lies your your question is very genuine and you have expressed a concern is to put an end isis what is the talks you are going to have with isis what is their philosophy what is their this thing one we have to create environment create as uh, about the left wing extremist also if they lay down their way, uh, arms government is willing to if they at least stop the violence government is willing to talk to them similarly the world community must speak in one voice stop the source of funding then they will come down and there can be discussion and the issues can be resolved through discussion that is the only way forward you cannot surrender to them if they go on doing like this ah oh, feel so free Please. So my question pertains to uh, security structure of the country, sir. And I would like to draw your uh, draw from my experience of having worked in the uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee's cabinet. A lot of uh, security structures as they exist in India today, sir. A lot of them took place or took shape during the regime of Prime Minister Vajpayee, along with uh, the then NSA, uh, Mr. Prajesh uh, Misras. And uh, the the structures which worked up then the the uh, NSC, the uh, the IDS, the NTRO, uh, the DIA, all of them are enduring legacies which are developing, uh, evolving till date. And the work which was done in formulation of policies like the uh, draft nuclear doctrine again took shape in, in, in that time, sir. And uh, people said a lot of this was because uh, uh, Mr. Mishra was very multiple uh, uh, appointments. He was the principal secretary as also the NSA and was close to the prime minister. So we have a similar situation in the country now, sir. I'm referring to Prime Minister Modi and uh, Mr. Dovaz. Uh, so obviously things which, if they have to move now, they will move at a rapid pace. What security structures or policies or framework can the nation expect with this combination at the helm of affairs today, No, no, you have mostly answered your question. It has to be followed up and then uh, you were a serious suggestion and a concern. I will convey the concern to him because I cannot go into details as the Vice President of the nation about the security structure. But our approach is very clear. We are trying to modernize our forces, one, train them also, motivate them. And the second one is that we have already declared for the sake of our foreign uh, friends who are there, and we have gone for nuclear during Atal Bihari Vajpayee's regime. We have clearly said no first use. No first use. Then some people said, then we have gone for nuclear. Why America has gone for nuclear? Why others have gone for nuclear? When America brought pressure on India to do away with this, Prime Minister Vajpayee politely told them, you are the aggressors, you are the leaders. You please do first. And then we will also follow you. Because enlightened self-interest and national interest is the guiding principle for any country. Keeping that in mind, the present government also is pursuing the same policy. As I told you, the Prime Minister walked an extra mile of going to Lahore to a family function of a Pakistani leader in order to send a goodwill and then extend a hand of friendship. But they did not reciprocate the same. Same is the case with regard to China. The Prime Minister visited and then met and then we were discussing about Dokram and then subsequently other issues and all. We are willing to discuss we, every issue, each and every issue. But the only thing is, as I told you, we cannot compromise on our unity and integrity. That's a broader principle and then there is a proper coordination among various wings of the uh, security system of the country and the present NSA also is capable of that way. 